Hello, Holy Wiremod here. Welcome to tutorial 22 in the G Lua Pro series, where we're going to be taking a look at Nextbots. So, Nextbots are very nice and easy to do. We're going to start with the setup here, which we go to the Entities folder as we have been with the last few tutorials. And we're going to have Nextbot underscore custom. Of course, in init.lua, we have an entity being created with the same name as the file name. And this time, the entity is being created 1,000 units in front of the player when they spawn in GM Construct. So let's go into the base game mode folder, as we always do. And we are going to go to Entities. And here we have Base Next Bot. So let's start with Share.Lua. Of course, we have all the necessities right here. And we'll just copy and paste those right into there. You already know what I'm going to fill out for here, so it doesn't really matter if you watch the last couple tutorials, of course. And as always, you can add in custom values as we have been with the last couple tutorials. So let's say we want to make this accessible via the spawn menu and sandbox mode, which will just set to true like that. And there you go. So that's fine. Next thing we want to look at from the share.lua is going to be the inits. So we have initialize right here. I'm just going to move this right there. And we also have the standard draw. And for the client and for the server, we have sp underscore nextbot. So let's take a look at that file. In sp underscore nextbot, we have behavior start. And this references coroutines, because Nextbots use behaviors which are essentially coroutines. Now, if you're not familiar with coroutines, I recommend that you pause this tutorial and go to tutorial number nine, where I explain it in depth, and that'll give you a very good idea. But for those who are already familiar or have watched that tutorial, a coroutine is being created with behavior start. And in this coroutine, we are going to simply be running this behavior. So, of course, we're going to need this for our next bot as well to determine the run behavior of the next bot. And that's going to be the code executed. We'll get into that in just a second. And also with the coroutine, we have behave update. And this is going to say um, how the bot's behavior is doing. Did the coroutine status become dead? And if so, it'll give you a nice warning. Elsewise, it's going to resume the coroutine's behavior execution over and over again until we tell the otherwise or the entity has been removed. We have some other useful functions from here. So we have body update, we have on leave ground, on land on ground, on stuck, etc. A bunch of useful things which are actually pretty easy to understand and figure out. So we'll be going over the more important ones such as move to position and play sequence and wait. So we'll get into that in just a moment. First, let's get rid of the necessities or get through the necessities of setting up this next bot. And we're going to have list set. We'll have NPC and then we'll have next bot underscore custom, which is going to be the name here. We're going to have another argument. This is going to be a table for our list set. So the first key value is name. And we're just going to call this custom bot. Call it whatever you like. Class, we're going to have nextbot underscore custom. It's very important to match the file name here with this one. Category. And then we're going to say nextbot category. So this is going to create that on your spawn menu in sandbox. So now that we have the list set up, for those who are curious on how to do that, let's go into initialization. Now the initialization, we're going to have set model. So just like that, we have set model, and we're going to be using Supums the Seagull. Now this next bot is going to be taking Supums. Supums is just going to be wandering around aimlessly until we get too close as a player, in which a sound's going to play, which will startle Supums. So we're going to take this custom value on the entity called startle distance. So when we get within 500 gmod units, and then it'll cause Supum to run away. Uh, variable distance. We'll set that up in the, later. Otherwise, Supums is just going to wander around, so we're going to have a wander distance, and we'll say about 200 Gmod units. Now, for the animations that are going to play when Supums gets startled, we're going to need to know what animations are available to the model. To find that out, you simply have get sequence list, and that will provide a list for you when Supum spawns on this server side console, which I'll show you in game uh, once we get to it. But for now, I'm just going to tell you what the sequences are called and 
I'll show you that in just a bit. So, so we have that set up. Next, we're going to actually need a function, and this is going to be a custom function, which is not in svnextbot. So this is something that we can make, and just to kind of show you that you can make your own functions for an entity. We're going to have player near, just like that. And this is going to tell if a player is near. By default, it'll assume just a player is far away, not close to Supum. So uh, otherwise, we're going to have a 4kv in pairs loop right here. And we're going to have ints, find in sphere. And then, of course, we're going to need our origin, which the sphere will be. And that's going to be the position of Supums. So there we go. And the number or radius in which we're going to be searching, that's going to be our startle distance up here. All right, so now we have a startle distance, and then we're going to complete this loop. So first off, is the entity within the startle distance a player? If it is, then we can proceed. And, and this is a nice thing to add to your next bots, is the player actually in line of sight with supums. So is line of sight clear? It's going to be the command that you go to. We have a vector right here. The vector in this case is going to be the position of supums the seagull. Okay. And then we're going to have then return true if that's the case. And that's going to stop the execution of the loop. So only one player needs to be within this sphere. All right. So that'll tell us that the player is near. Now that we have a way to tell that the player is near, we need to simply make the behavior. Now with coroutines, we simply use a while loop and that while loop will always be set to true and then we'll just end it like such and now we're going to need a conditional check to say self and that's going to be the entity of course and then we're going to be using our player near function so if the player is near then execute such code else execute this code and after the execution of either one we're going to use a coroutine dot wait command so we're going to wait one second before executing this code again and it's going to loop infinitely until either supums dies or something happens with the coroutine there's an error somewhere all right so now that we have that set up let's set up the behavior of the npc so when supums is just wandering around so there's no player near we're going to activity or start at activity, and this is going to be an act enumeration called act underscore walk. So Supums is just going to be playing this walk animation, and it's going to be moving at a speed, which you access via the loco key value of the entity. Set desired speed, just like this, and then we're going to have an integer, which is going to be our speed, and that will be 100 units. Then we're going to be utilizing move to position which is found right over here so we go back to our file we have move to position we have position and options don't worry about options for now we're just going to worry about a position and that will move us to the given position that we specify so let's say move to position and we're going to start with the position of supums plus an offset vector which we'll have right here so some x, y, and z value, our z value is going to be zero. Our x and y values are going to be math random. Actually, we'll just do rand like this, and we'll have negative one to one. And then we'll have negative one to one right here. And then we're going to have a multiplier of our wander distance. Okay, so very, very simple so far. And then after we are done wandering, we are going to say, hey, Supums, I'm just going to copy and paste this start activity again. We want you to be idle. So then we have the idle enumeration, and that's going to cancel the walking animation. And then we restart this every one second as such. Now, otherwise, after this one second, if a player happens to be within the startle distance, then we're going to execute the following behavior. So first we're going to set the desired speed instead of 100 to 300. And then we're going to be emitting a sound. So let's say an alarm gets emitted. And this alarm is a default sound from Half-Life 2 in Gary's Mod. Where we have the ambient alarm, klaxon 1. And then we're going to be playing a sequence and waiting. 
So what this does is it plays through a sequence and it waits for that sequence to end by using coroutine wait and then it executes the next command. So let's play sequence and wait and the sequence we are going to be playing is going to be called simply hop. Now by default the speed is simply one as you can see right here so we don't have to specify a speed. So that's nice. And again I'll be showing you how to get all the other sequences after we go inside the game and cover all that. So now instead of walk, we're going to have run for activity. So it's going to set it to the run. And then we're going to be moving to position just like we did here. And instead of wander distance, we can have 1000. Heck, we can even set this to run distance. We can set another value here if we want to. However, I'm sure you know how to do that. So I'm not going to bother with those details just to save some time. So we're going to have move to position 1,000 units away in some direction. And then we are going to be, instead of hopping, we're going to stop with a nice animation called land. And then finally, just as we did before, we're going to start activity act idle. And that's going to stop Supums in his track. And then we can restart to the next cover team, check if the player is near, and do it all over again. Okay. So that's going to be the entire code. So the next thing to do is we're going to go into the server and I'm going to show you some nice stuff about pathfinding and nav meshes. Okay, so we're now in the server and really quick, I would like to take notice of something. So we'll go here. First off, there was something to fix. So instead of the base underscore entity, we have base underscore next bot. You can't just copy and paste from share.lua or else you're going to get a shadow without any model and whatnot, it looks really bad. So this is how you correct that for those who are having an issue. And here is the list I was talking about where we get all the sequences. And here we have hop, land, and as you can see, we have hop and land. This list will be different depending on what model that you get the sequence list for, but that's what I'm referencing when I'm doing play sequence and wait for those who were curious and confused. Now there's a couple advantages to using a next bot over the base AI. As you can see, this NPC is actually moving around. So that's because the next bot doesn't rely on the ground nodes that a base AI does. Instead, it relies on something called nav, nav mesh. Now, if the map does not have a nav mesh, you can actually generate the nav mesh for the next bots by going into your console. And then you'd simply put in, let's just uh, make it so you can actually see what I'm typing here. We'll have SV cheats one, just as such. And then you want to put in something called nav generate. Now this does take a long time, so I'm not going to do in the server. However, you just would enter that command and that will generate the nav mesh so your NPCs can move around on the map. Otherwise, let's take a look at the behavior. So I'm going to turn my volume up and hope you can hear it. As you can see, the seagull's moving. Now let's get kind of close, but you notice it's not triggering. That's the line of sight. And then let's get in line of sight and within 500 units. As you can see, it got startled by that alarm and now it's running away to some random position and there's our second animation which played. So I'll do that one more time. And it's kind of hilarious to watch. But that will be the tutorial on next bots. There's a lot more you can do, of course, depending on whatever behavior you set. This is just a simple example. If you have any questions, feel free to leave so in the comment section below. If you like the content, feel free to like, subscribe, share, comment, and bell. And I will catch you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Sorry, Supums. Don't forget to check out Hexane Networks for affordable and high-performance server hosting. That's Hexane Networks, whose link is in the description below.